In this week's presentation, I'll be sharing with you on the topic of summary writing and paraphrasing. Before we go any further, let's just quickly outline our objectives for this presentation. First, I'd like for you to understand the role of summary writing and paraphrasing for academic purposes. I know that many of you have done summary writing before at high school and possibly for other kinds of activities. We want to look at it today in an academic context. Secondly, we would like to review the techniques that can be used to identify main ideas in a text. This was touched on last week, but I believe that it is very important to the skill of summary writing. So it will be quickly reviewed in this presentation. We also need to discuss the steps that you are going to follow for writing a summary. And finally, we're going to identify some of the skills that are required for summary writing. Let's quickly talk about the function of summaries and paraphrases. As you may already know, summarizing and paraphrasing are an essential part of research and writing preparation. Summarizing and paraphrasing allow you to accurately record important portions of secondary sources for reference when you begin to assemble your points in the pre-writing stage. One of the key features of summaries is that they present the idea or ideas of the original source it was taken from without copying the exact words of the original. Another important point that you need to note as the writer of the summary is that your summary must be a concise representation of the original text. You may summarize the original into one third to one fifth of its original length. To do this, you will apply many of the skills that were shared in our presentation last week. Bear in mind also that your summary does not include any of the supporting points of the original piece of text, such as examples or lists. And you have to be able to do this without copying the exact words of the original writer. Summaries are usually written based on longer pieces of writing. So a long article or, or journal article usually will be summarized. Let's look at the key features of paraphrases. Paraphrases like summaries also represent the main ideas of the original source, but in addition, it includes the supporting points. This is something that summaries do not do. It does this just like summaries, without copying the exact words of the original text. Paraphrasing is used for shorter quotes. So bear in mind that shorter quotes are paraphrased. If you have an interesting quote that you believe will enhance your piece of writing in somewhere, add to your piece of writing, or present some evidence for a point that you're making, then you can paraphrase it. Your quote may be possibly two or three lines long, you can paraphrase that and include it into your piece of writing. Remember that paraphrasing sometimes has a different structure from the original, while summaries generally tend to duplicate the structure of the original piece of writing. Just to remind you, a summary is a concise version of a longer body of writing that represents only the main points of the original text while a paraphrase is a rewording of the original piece of writing, but it does not have to be shorter than the original text. You will be able to see an example of this before the session ends. Let us quickly review some of the techniques that can be used for identifying the main ideas that will be used to construct your summary. First, you will remember that you should attempt to find a thesis statement of the original text. This can usually be located in the introduction or in the introductory parts of the paper that you are summarizing. Next, you will need to find the topic sentences of your paragraph and extract them, carefully comparing them to your thesis to determine which of them represent the main idea that is related to the thesis statement. Third, 
you will remember that many but not all paragraphs have a concluding sentence that reinforces the topic sentence. Find that concluding sentence to confirm the point that is made by the topic sentence. Let's quickly look at some of the skills that are required for summary and paraphrasing. Reading and comprehension skills. This is very important. Even before you begin to write your summary, you need to practice your reading and comprehension skills. Interestingly, one of the comprehension skills that you can practice is identifying the things that you do not understand. So if there are sections of the text that you are reading that you are not clear on, you should highlight that section or underline that section and try to gain more clarity on what the writer is trying to say, either by looking for context clues in the piece of writing, or you can do some additional reading on that specific aspect of what is being written about. You can construct questions that represent what you are not too clear on and then attempt to answer those questions by yourself or with a friend. You can also do some self-questioning. Ask yourself why the writer said that. Why didn't the writer include this piece of information or why was this excluded? You can also relate the information to some of the background knowledge that you might have on the topic. Remember not to include any of your biases into your reading and understanding, but these are some of the comprehension skills that you can apply to any piece of reading in order to gain some clarity. Additionally, you should be able to use language well. This means that your grammar and your vocab need to be very effective in expressing the original ideas of that piece of writing. Your synthesis skills are also very important. Synthesis refers to the ability to put together various points in a sensible and logical way once those points are related or to show the relationship between those various points that you have extracted from a piece of writing or various pieces of writing. Let's look, for example, at how the changing of vocab can be done. You can encounter the word argues, and you may be able to change it to claims. People who grew up using technology may be referred to as digital natives. In that way, you're also able to economize on words. You have wages, salaries, or to economize, you can say save. You should also note that there is no need to paraphrase every single word. You don't need to change every single word, but you should attempt to ensure that whatever you represent in your summary or your paraphrase is significantly different from what the original writer included in their piece of writing. Now, let's quickly move on to steps for summary writing. And I'm going to share with you four of those steps. We've reviewed the techniques that you can use for identifying main ideas. We have touched on some of the skills that are required for summarizing and paraphrasing. And now we're going to look at four steps for summary writing. Step number one, now that you have extracted the main points, rewrite them in your own words. Rewriting in your own words while retaining the meaning of what was originally written can create greater clarity for both the writer and his or her audience. This is in fact the skill of paraphrasing. So in step number one, you're going to paraphrase your main points. We've spoken about reading and comprehension, which is what you do as soon as you have your piece of writing that you need to summarize. You're going to read it, try to understand it. And we spoke about identifying main points. 
once you believe you have identified in that piece of writing what the main points are, you can then go into your steps for writing the summary. And you can use those main points and rewrite them. So you're paraphrasing the main points of that original text. In step number two, you must synthesize the ideas presented in your list of main points. The original writer very likely took care to create a connected whole. When you attempt to reconstruct the main ideas of one writer or article, or you attempt to put together various summaries or paraphrases from various secondary sources related to the same topic, you must ensure that you make the connections between your main ideas are very clear. You can achieve synthesis by properly sequencing and organizing your points before writing. In my experience, it is very useful to number your points. So as you go along and you find your, your different points that you may want to include from your original source, then you should number them point number one, point number two. So you can number your points and that will help to create a sequence. This is especially useful if you're going to use various sources. So for example, if you're writing a literature review, you may read many, many articles and then you're going to extract a few quotes or a few lines from various articles. These you may want to summarize or paraphrase and then later on include them in this literature review. And so when you do that, you could end up with a dozen points that you have to include on one topic. It could be a little confusing when you begin to write or before you begin to write. So what you should do is sequence them. You can also organize them by separating your information into subheadings such as similarities and differences. And then you place your, your, your small quotes or your paraphrases into those subheadings so that later on you can refer to them, pull them out as groups and rewrite them. So synthesizing your points then includes the sequencing and organizing of the main points that you have extracted from your original text. And you do this to ensure that you create a connected piece of writing when you write your summary or you write your literature review. And so you have to use your connectors and remember sequencing and organizing will be very helpful for synthesis. Let's quickly move on to the third step. Write your summary. Using the sequence created above, begin to write your summary. In this course, you may only be required to write short summaries of single articles, but for research, you may have to synthesize multiple paraphrased sections or portions of various articles into one coherent summary. Thus, you must carefully follow the sequence you previously constructed and use your topic sentences to keep your writing organized. So remember that as the writer of a summary, you should be able to write effective paragraphs that have a clear topic sentence and identify or discuss one point per paragraph. Remember to use your transitional words and phrases as you move from point to point. So that remember the first thing that you want to do is to paraphrase those main points. Then you sequence them or synthesize them properly. You, de you determine what order they should come in that makes the most sense. And then you begin to write your summary. In our fourth and final stage, which is a very important one, you need to proofread or edit your summary. Ensure that you have accurately modified the vocab in such a way that the original meaning of the text is not lost. Ensure that the language is error-free and the summary is organized and flows in a logical manner that is easy to understand. Additionally, 
ensure that all main points have been included and supporting details like examples, anecdotes, analogies, statistics, and lengthy lists have been excluded, right? So know what should be included in your summary and know what should be excluded as well. Do your proofreading. Proofreading is very, very important. And this is the final step in the writing of your summary. Now, quickly, just to review, true or false? A summary, it, sorry, summary is a synonym for paraphrase. True or false? Is summary and paraphrase the same thing? Well, I hope you said false. The answer is false. Summary and paraphrase do not mean the same thing. Remember, a summary makes your information more concise, while a paraphrase is a representation of what was written in the original text, and it is done in your own words. Both summaries and paraphrases should be written in your own words, but summaries are very concise. True or false? Summaries must be written in your own words. I hope you said true. Summaries must be written in your own words. I think I gave away this answer a little earlier. Longer texts are summarized and quotes or shorter texts are paraphrased. True or false? The answer to that is true. Longer texts are summarized or they're made more concise while quotes or shorter texts can be paraphrased. True or false, all of the details of the original text are important when writing a summary. Well, that's not true. You don't need to have all of the original text when you're writing a summary. You just need to have your main points. Now let's look at an example. In our original, we have here a portion of writing that was taken from Hurley 1985 and it says another successful approach to the prevention of criminality has been to target very young children in a school setting before problems arise. The Perry preschool program started 22 years ago in a low socioeconomic area in Ypsilanti, Michigan has offered some of the most solid evidence to date that early intervention through high quality preschool program can significantly alter a child's life. A study released this fall tells what happened to 123 disadvantaged children from preschool age to present. The detention and arrest rate for the 50-year children who had attended the preschool program was 31% compared to 51% for the 65 who did not. Similarly, those in the preschool program were more likely to have graduated from high school, have enrolled in post-secondary education programs, and be employed, and less likely to have become pregnant teenagers. Let's look at the summary and the paraphrase of this extract. You will notice just by looking at the screen that the summary is significantly shorter than the paraphrase. So the summary says a 1985 study from the Perry Preschool Program in Michigan suggests that disadvantaged children who attended preschool are less likely to be arrested as adults. They choose more education, better employment records, and avoid teenage pregnancy more often than those without the preschool. Here you see the writer has identified the study. It has identified the main issue that is addressed in the study and the main outcomes. And it has also given credit to the source, Hurley, and the page number is also included there in the parenthesis at the end. In the paraphrase, we see that all of the statistics that were included in the original text are also included in the paraphrase, along with the features that were included in the summary such as the title of the study, those who were involved in the study. You also have the credit to the source at the bottom and the outcomes of the study as well.
However, the paraphrase is a more true representation of everything that was included in the original, right? So as we said earlier, the paraphrase is always a bit longer and it's, it's always more like the original because it includes all of the supporting points as well as the main points. While the summary is significantly shorter because it is a concise representation of the original piece. In both the paraphrase and the summary though, as you can see here, there are some very important pieces of information that you must include, such as the main issue that is being discussed, main outcomes, aim of the study, year of the study, and the author, of course. So give credit to your source. When and how to quote. Use the direct quotes when you feel there is a need to retain the exact words of the author, right? Use it when you think there is really a need to retain the exact words. Uh, Wyrick 2011 in, in the book, Steps to Writing Well, says it's best to use a direct quotation only when it expresses a point in a far more impressive or emphatic or concise way than you could say it yourself, right? So it, it must be a quote that is really more impressive, more emphatic than, than you could possibly do in a paraphrase. Remember not to use your quotations uh, too excessively, quote sparingly, not excessively. Use quotation marks to enclose your quotations except for block quotations. So you should use your punctuation marks correctly. If you're going to write a quote that is probably four lines and more, then you will use a quotation a block and that is set off from the rest of your text. Right? And later on, you'll be given some information on how to do this. At the end of this presentation, I advise that you check out Purdue All online. They have a lot of guidelines and very useful information and examples on how you can do the APA referencing correctly, which includes all of this kind of information, how to, to include your quotes, how to punctuate correctly, and all of that. Ensure that you use in-text or parenthetical citations to acknowledge your source. And uh, I have a few examples here. So in-text citations can be done in various ways. There, is, there isn't really one way in which you always have to do it. So you can use the first option, Schiedlauer 2013. Notice that the date is included in parenthesis there. And then you have the quote in each case in quotation marks. So pay attention to those little things. If you don't use your quotation marks, you don't include your author or your year, one would say that you have plagiarized, right? So here are some options, some different ways in which you can structure your sentence or you can introduce your quote in your, your sentence or in your essay, right? These are some options for you. So I would advise that you pause the the video at this point and you carefully look at this, but I don't want to take up your time with reading this. Here's an example of parenthetical citation, Schiedlauer 2013 in the parenthesis at the end of the quote, right? Notice in every case that our quotes are in quotation marks. So this is a question I believe that students often ask, can we quote in a summary? How many times are we allowed to quote in a summary? Well, there's really no answer to that question. But remember that if you are going to quote, make it sparing and do it properly, do it correctly, right? And ensure that it is not just in the piece of writing all by itself, but it has been properly integrated into the piece of writing. So ensure that you comment on it and you tie it into your writing properly if you are going to use a quote. Here are some references for you. You can refer to these books. They're both available online. And here are some additional resources 
that you can also look into, which I believe will be very, very useful for you. If you have any other questions on summary writing, I hope that you will bring all of those questions to the webinar so that we can discuss them. Remember, our topic for today was using main points for summary writing and also for the writing of paraphrases. And here are some of the things just to review quickly that we looked at today. These were our objectives. I hope that we have met all of them for you and that the topic of summarizing and paraphrasing is a lot clearer in your mind. I look forward to hearing your questions later on when we meet for the webinars. And I hope that you will stay safe and stay well until then.